Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Tonight, we have the story of a shocking case of child neglect in the Northern Valley. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. 27-year-old Anthony Mishler of Grand Forks has been charged with one felony count of child neglect. It stems from the treatment of three children who are living with him. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson has the disturbing details. The Columbia Heights Trailer Park just off South Columbia Road is tidy and well kept. However, what was allegedly going on behind the doors of 2561 Huntington Park Drive is shocking. A police officer responded to a report that three kids who lived here smelled like pet urine. The officer who responded to the call reports that once inside the trailer, the smell was horrific. It was hard to breathe. Her eyes hurt, and she instantly had a headache. The officer reported there was garbage all over the place. There was human feces on the walls, window, and carpet, and three cats urinating around the home. We've established you can't specifically address this case, but are these type of cases something you see very often around the area? Uh, Something uh, extreme? No. Uh, we, we do see them on occasion, luckily, not more often uh, than we do. Anthony Mishler is out of jail awaiting his next court appearance. The three children who were living here have been turned over to social services. Certainly we would encourage anyone with information that, that a child might be living in such an environment to please call. Lieutenant Zimmel says that is the key to making sure this is not happening in your neighborhood. Simply report it. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Anthony Mishler is charged with a Class C felony. If he's convicted, the charge carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison. A Grand Forks man is in jail after allegedly hitting another man in the head with a claw hammer. David Narlock faces an aggravated assault charge. Police responded to an apartment complex at 323 10th Avenue North last night. John McIntosh told police that he was in a common basement area of the apartment. McIntosh says Narlock came in and told him he was too loud and hit him in the head with a hammer. Police say the victim had a large bleeding wound on the back of his head. David Narlock is facing a felony charge that carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison. A dry morning and a wet afternoon. We're wondering when the showers will end. Hutch, what's going on this evening? Well, make sure you have that umbrella handy if you have any outdoor activities at all. Right now, most of the rainfall, heavy at that, is confined to the southern half of our viewing area, mainly along and south of Highway 200 in North Dakota and southeast North Dakota into central North Dakota, a band of heavy precipitation with a few strikes of lightning here and there. The heaviest of the rain is focused around that uh, Ransom County area and spreading into now Richland County. We also have another area of heavy rain in and around Foster County right now. This is all slowly progressing to the north and east. So nearly steady temperatures and rain in the Southern Valley all evening long. It will be creeping though towards our northern counties as we go through the overnight. So your planner shows temperatures in those upper 40s almost steady. Nice southeast breeze at 15 miles per hour. It's going to be a wet evening. I'll have details on when I expect this to clear out of here and what mm -hmm. we can expect as we glide through the rest of our work week. Hint, hint, in a few minutes. <laughs> that sounds promising. Gliding Maybe. is sometimes fun. Yeah, yes. it is. Thank you, you Hutch. Uh -huh. And remember, you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Search VNL Weather in the App Store. A Moorhead public school bus ended up in the ditch along Highway 75 this morning after an SUV pulled out in front of it. Police say the bus was heading north and an SUV was stopped at the intersection of 28th Avenue. The driver of the SUV pulled out onto the highway. The bus driver swerved to try and avoid the SUV but ended up hitting it on the driver's side. The driver of the SUV was taken away by ambulance. Police say she's expected to be okay. The school bus ended up in the ditch with significant damage. No children were on the bus at the time of the crash. The Fargo Police Department and the Spirit Shop off of 13th Avenue are both asking for your help in identifying these two people. They're wanted for trying to shoplift early this morning. The man is also wanted for terrorizing after allegedly showing a knife. A store employee says the man is believed to be a Somalian in his late 20s to early 30s, about 5 foot 10 and 140 pounds. They also believe the two were driving a dark blue four-door Nissan car with a 
driver rear tail light out and left front spare tire. If you have any information, you're asked to contact police. Measure 4 opponents in North Dakota are facing fresh scrutiny after mailers with the images of veterans telling people they should vote no ended up in mailboxes across the state. Several veteran organizations came together today to throw their support behind Measure 4 and let people know the flyers, in their words, are misleading at best. They don't really give a rip about us personally. Uh, they're, they're concerned about their money. Those against Measure 4 say if the measure passes, only a small amount will go toward helping veterans, while the rest is left up to the government to spend however they'd like. The battle lines have moved in the Dakota Access Pipeline protest movement. Law enforcement have closed Highway 1806 indefinitely following weekend protest activities in which protesters formed their own roadblock south of Fort Rice. Bo Evans reports. It's calm now at the new law enforcement checkpoint on Highway 1806, but things were quite different Sunday afternoon. I'm talking to this individual right here. Okay. Hey! Law enforcement say protesters formed a new camp on private property and set up their own roadblock. Officers were able to convince them to remove the block, but materials remain on the side of the road. Officers were able to engage the individuals that were creating this roadblock. We visited with them, and eventually they removed the items from the roadway, but the ditches are still full of all those items that could easily be moved back into the roadway and blocked. Protesters have claimed eminent domain over the new land, saying it's the site of sacred burial grounds. We are declaring that the United States government and Martin County of, and all these, all these officers are in violation of treaty rights. At a press conference today, law enforcement officials would not say if they have plans to remove the protesters from the new camp, but say they are working through back channels to communicate with protest leaders. Highway 1806 remains closed between the new police checkpoint at Fort Rice and at the intersection of highways 24 and 1806. More support today for the sales tax extension that Fargo and Cass County voters will be deciding on uh, just uh, two weeks from today. Chief Economist Robert Dietz says the permanent flood protection sales tax will pay for protecting the metro area's economic base. Dietz and the home builders released a report that says the home building industry here has resulted in more than $85 million in net revenue over the past 15 years. The Dilworth Police Department is adding another full-time officer. This will be the first new officer position in more than 10 years. Police Chief Ty Sharp received approval from the City Council to start the process for hiring with an anticipated start date of January 2017. Chief Sharp says he has made this one of his top priorities since being hired in 2014. This is the first new police officer position for the city since 2005. One veterinary hospital is bringing in a unique service for pet owners. Two Rivers Veterinary Hospital now has an underwater treadmill for dogs. This treadmill is designed to help your furry friend post-surgery lose weight or train for hunting season. Veterinarians say they can make specific adjustments to help each dog accomplish their goal. Is different than another one, so they'll respond differently to different methods. So some really respond to medication, some respond to exercise, and everybody loves water, so it, it's great for especially the water dogs. Two Rivers Veterinary Hospital is holding a re-grand opening tomorrow from 4 to 7 p.m. to celebrate its five years in the area. Some breaking news for you now. The Lake Agassiz Elementary School in Grand Forks went on lockdown for an hour this morning. School officials say it was done as a precaution because police were searching for a suspect in the area who was not related to anything at the school. School was not disrupted. Stick with Valley News Live for updates on this story. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. A truck goes on a beer run, and there's no driver. That's still ahead tonight. A lot of clouds throughout the valley today, and now those clouds yielding some rainfall heading into the evening. It was another cool day across the valley with a lot of 40s and low 50s. We'll have details on what to expect for the remainder of our week coming up right after this.